Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and this is um, question number six, part C from the Solomon F um, P4 or C4 collection, which is also question number seven, part C from my integration to P4 worksheet. Um, and this question here is a continuation of the question before. We're, we've done part A and B in a separate video, with a link to which will be found somewhere in the end of the video somewhere in this area somewhere over here you'll find the link to the previous parts if you want to watch them but it says here figure one shows part of the curve with the equation y equals x to the power of half tan x the shaded region bounded by the curve the x-axis and the line x equals pi over 3 is rotated through two pi radians around the x-axis show that the volume of the solid formed is a 1 over 18 pi cubed pi squared times 6 root 3 minus pi minus pi lin 2 Okay, so now, when we are finding the volume of revolution of a solid, and we're, ro we're finding the volume formed when it's ro rotated around the x-axis, what we consider is very small parts of the, the, the area, okay, such that the thickness, we call it a small amount of x, which we say dx, and the height of this, this little rectangle here is going to be the y value of the point there, so this is going to be y. And we take that little rectangle. Now for the area, we find y times dx, and then we find we add up all the strips of, of rectangles from where we want to start to where we want to end. So we end up with the integral of y dx, that's like the area of each strip, between the limits of where you want to start and where you want to finish. That's for the area under the curve. Now for the volume, what we do is, um, volume of the, the volume of the solid form when you rotate this around, now you re instead of rotating the whole shape around in one go, we rotate each little cylinder or each little rectangle around to form a cylinder. If you rotate this around the x-axis, you'll end up with like a, a cylindrical shape, like this. Okay, there will be a cylindrical shape where the radius of the cylinder would be this y value, and the thickness of the cylinder is again dx. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. If you have a cylinder, the volume is the radius times the pi times the radius squared times the height. Now in this case, this is a small cylinder like on its side almost. Where the x part is, this is like the height, the dx. And the radius is the y value. So it's pi times, it's pi times y squared dx. That's the volume of one of these cylinders. We want the volume of all of them between, you can just write the pi on the outside of the integral because it's a constant, between A and B. So that's in general the volume of revolution of a solid which is rotated 360 degrees or 2 pi about the x-axis. Now, so we, we can use that formula now to basically find the volume of this. So we have V equals pi times the integral of y squared dx between the limits that you want to find is volume. In our case, you're going to have the volume is equal to pi, and the limits will be 0 and pi over 3. <coughs> and you're going to have x to the power of a half times tan x squared with respect to x. So that gives you pi. That will give you x times tan squared x dx between 0 and pi over 3. If I find the volume, if I integrate this, that will be the volume of the solid formed. Now, this is a type of integration where you have two separate functions, two different functions multiplied together. And you can see one of them is a type of function that gets simpler as you, um, as you um, when you differentiate it, right? So we can use integration by parts, where one of them we call u and the other one we call dv dx. And whatever we call u, we have to we differentiate it. Whatever we call dv dx, we have to integrate it. So the one that is easy, easily, more easily broken down, okay, is the one that you should choose for u. And we can see here, x is, when you differentiate it, becomes 1. When I put du dx, I get 1. But when I integrate tan squared x, it doesn't give me, it give, doesn't give me something simpler, but it's, that's fine, because this did. So what I'm going to do now, so I, and to put tan, tan squared x here would have been a problem, but to put u here is no problem. 
Now, tan, tan squared x, when we integrate it, we already found that in the first question, part a. Part a, they told us to integrate tan squared x. So we already got the result that the integral of tan squared x is tan x minus x plus c. Okay, so I can just quote that result now. The integral of tan squared x is tan x minus x. I don't need the plus c because I have a different integral that I'm using here. So that's how we proceed. So now we can say that the volume of revolution is given by pi times. We're going to have u times v, so this, this times that, which is x times tan x minus x. And then minus the integral of this times that. So it's minus the integral of tan x minus x times 1 with respect to x. And all of that is in the limits of pi over 3 and 0. So let's continue here. We're going to have um, pi is going to be x times tan x minus x squared minus, now integrating tan x. We already did it again in the first part of the question. And it's also quoted in the formula book. And even the result is quoted in part B. So <clears throat> we can just use that result. So it's the lin of the modulus of sec x. So if I integrate tan x, I get the lin of the modulus of secant x. And I'm going to integrate minus x, which is going to give me minus x squared over 2. And I've got my limits, pi over 3 and 0. So let's continue. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply by the pi as well. So I'll have pi x times tan x minus pi x squared minus pi times lin of the modulus of secant x plus pi x squared over 2, pi over 3 and 0. Okay, now we can simplify some of these terms. Um, we have pi x tan x minus minus pi x squared plus pi x squared over 2 is minus pi x squared over 2 minus pi times in fact I can make this plus pi times lin of the modulus of cosine x it's easier for me to use cosine x here because we know that minus lin of the modulus of secant x is the same as the lin of the modulus of secant x all to the power of minus 1 because we know that this is using the power law. And this means the reciprocal, not the inverse, the reciprocal. Because it's all to the power of minus 1. That's 1 over uh, sec, that's one over secant x, which is the same as cosine x. 1 over secant x is cosine x. So I can write this as um, plus lin cosine x. Okay, so now I have everything ready to substitute the values in. So I'm going to have here pi over 3 instead of x here. So I have pi times pi over 3 times tan pi over 3 minus pi over 2 times pi over 3 squared plus pi times the lin of the modulus of cosine of pi over 3. And um, minus, I'm going to put 0 in here as well. That's going to give me 0 and 0. And I'll be left with pi times the lin of the modulus of cosine of 0. Okay, cosine of 0. All right. So I'm going to have v equals. This is going to give me pi squared over 3 times tan of pi over 3 is root 3. Minus. This would be pi over 2 times pi squared over 9. That's pi cubed over... 18 plus pi times the lin of cosine pi over 3, that's a half, so it's plus pi times the lin of a half, I don't need the modulus 9 because that's positive now, <coughs> minus pi times the lin of cosine of 0 is 1. Okay, and that gives us 0, so that's going to disappear. And I want to have, if we look at what they told us to show, I've got it already, whoops. They wanted us to show this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just bring that down there. Hold on a second. Okay, so they wanted us to show that we're going to get this. So let's try to sort this out. And what I can do here 
is I can make these the same denominator, okay, um, of 18. Okay, um, so this will be 6 pi squared times root 3 minus pi cubed of 18. So I made this into 6 pi cubed over 6 pi squared root 3 over, eight, over 18. So I've combined them as 1. And then I'm going to have um, lin over half is the same as the lin of 2 to the power of minus 1 which is the same as the minus lin 2. So I can call this minus pi lin 2 because they want a lin 2 in there. And this becomes 0 because lin of 1 is 0. So now we can see that I've got here a common factor of pi squared over 18. Okay, so I can say 1 over 18 pi squared from these two terms at least. Then I've got 6 um, root 3 because I've taken out the pi squared. And I've got a minus pi left, okay, which is what I exactly have to have there. And I've got minus pi lin 2. So we can see it worked out exactly as they want us to show it when we re rearrange it like that. So there's the answer to question um, number 7, part C. Okay, so I hope that was clear. It's a bit of... Um, algebraic type of manipulation going on there at the end but it worked out fine in the end you have to just keep your clear head clear not make silly mistakes with signs and stuff and you'll, you'll get there okay all right so there's <laughs> that's the answer to that question about volumes of revolution other questions from this paper solomon f when i get round to answering them will be in this playlist that should appear in this section here other questions from um this end of topic worksheet which is integration two should be found in the playlist over here. If you want to have a link to part A and B of the question, you can find the link in this playlist. And you can also find other questions to do with integration from P4 in the link that should appear somewhere in this area. Thank you for watching and see you soon.